That is to say, in the same sense that when you go to a concert and you listen to someone play Mozart, he has nothing to sell except the sound of the music. He doesn't want to convert you to anything. He doesn't want you to join an organization in favor of Mozart's music as opposed to, say, Beethoven's. And I approach you in the same spirit as a musician with his piano or a violinist with his violin. I just want you to enjoy a point of view which I enjoy. The objective of Buddhism in all its forms is to bring about a fundamental change in a human being's everyday state of consciousness. If I make it yet more specific, it's to bring about a change in your sense of personal identity, that is to say, in your sensation of who and what you are. The Buddhist would say that almost all human beings have a phony sense of identity. A delusion, a hallucination as to who they are. I'm terribly interested in this problem of identity. And I try and find out what people mean when they say the word I. I think this is one of the most fascinating questions. Who do you think you are? Now, what seems to develop is this. Most people think that I is a center of sensitivity somewhere inside their skin. And the majority of people feel that it's in their heads. The civilizations in different periods of history have differed about this. Some people feel that they exist in the solar plexus. Other people feel that they exist about here. But in American culture today, or in the Western culture in general, most people feel that they exist in here. And there is, as it were, a little man sitting inside the center of the skull. And he has a television screen in front of him, which gives him all messages from the eyeballs. He has earphones on, and that gives him all messages from the ears. And he has in front of him a control panel with various dials and buttons and things which enable him to influence the arms and legs and to get all sorts of information from the nerve ends. And that's you. This sensation of being a separate, lonely individual is a hallucination. It's a hallucination brought about by various causes, the way we are brought up. Uh, being the chief of them, of course. I remember as a child, and you probably have very similar memories to mine, that uh, all our parents were desperately interested in identifying us. You don't you remember that sometimes you went out and played with other children, and there was someone in the group of other children you admired and looked up to, and you came home imitating the mannerisms of that other child. And your mother said to you, Johnny, Johnny, that's not you, that's Peter. You felt a little bit ashamed because somehow you had let her down. She wanted you to be you, her child, and not Mrs. Jones's child, Peter. And so in many ways, we are all taught this. So, when you are told who you are, and that you must be free, furthermore, that you must survive, you must go on living, and that becomes a kind of compulsion, you get mixed up. It's very simple. Of course you get mixed up. If you think you must do something, which will only be the thing required of you if you do it freely. These are the sort of influences, then, that cause human beings all over the world to feel isolated. To feel that 
they are centers of awareness locked up in bags of skin. Of skin. Of skin. Of skin. Of skin. Of skin. Of skin.